Dig Safely New York has a new name and new look. You Dig and Why. Safe digging starts here. Visit youdigandwhy.org to learn more. Hello, and welcome to Exact Ticks, brought to you by Dig Safely New York. In this video, we're taking a closer look at the excavator tickets roll. To start a new location request, click on the new button under your name in the upper right-hand corner of the dashboard. After you select New, you will be brought to the location request creation form. You will start with the contact information section. Every web user will have contact information pre-populated into the section based on the information that you use to create your Exactix account. Note, the fields that are grayed out cannot be altered. If any of this information is incorrect, please contact Dig Safely New York's web services team to update your contact information. There are two areas that you can change for your location request in the contact information section. These are the alternate contact fields and the email field. In the alternate contact field, you can populate other means of contacting you, such as cell, email, or phone number. Simply change the type of contact using the drop-down options and type in the information, like a cell phone number, that matches the type you have selected. If you select a contact type and put in the respective response, but change your mind and would like to leave the field blank, use your keyboard to delete the number or email you have inserted and also delete the type of contact you have selected. Deleting the type of contact you have selected by using your keyboard will change the field back to type. Below the alternate contact is a field for email. This can also be changed to show another email address that you would like to use for the purposes of that specific location request. Please note, both Dig Safely New York and locators for underground facility owners, operators may use this information to contact you with information, problems, or questions. It is important that you keep your contact information accurate and up to date. Next, You'll enter your site contact information. First is your field contact. When you click the field contact text box, a drop-down list of people associated with your company will appear. You can choose someone from this list or input a new contact. If you are manually entering in a field contact, please ensure that you include a phone number and an email address. If the utility companies or their locators have any questions, the field contact is the person they will reach out to. If you need to enter more than one field contact on your location request, you can click on the Add Additional Contact text under the first primary field contact entered. The system will generate the same list for you to choose from or give you the ability to manually input a new contact. If you select or type in a person, then decide to delete that contact, make sure you click the minus symbol to the left of the name field. This will ensure you can successfully submit your location request. If you do not do this and leave the field blank after previously having information entered, you will receive an error message when trying to submit your location request. This is the person, contractor, organization, or utility company who hired you to do the work. For example, if you are doing the work for a homeowner, you would type in their name. For example, Jane Doe, or simply type homeowner. If you are doing the work for a business, you would type in the name of that business, for example, Doe Supermarket. If you are doing the work for a utility that is a member of Dig Safely New York, the system will generate a drop-down list of possible matches as you are typing in your response. New to the location request form is the job number field. This is a custom field that allows you to type in numbers and or letters to better associate your jobs, projects, with the respective location requests. Next, for what type of work, you can either select from the drop-down the type of work you are doing, or you can enter a type that is not listed. You can access the drop-down by either clicking on that field, or by typing in the first few letters of the work type you are doing. Make sure you select the suggested type of work by clicking on or pressing Enter Return on your keyboard. More than one option can be selected or typed into the field. Enter all that apply to your location request. Next, you'll be asked what type of equipment you're using. Once you begin typing, a list of possible matches will populate. 
You can select your option from the drop-down menu by clicking it, or press Enter or Return on your keyboard. Note, if you need to enter more than one type of equipment, just start typing the next item you're using for that job. Then you'll be asked if there's any horizontal drilling or boring being done. If you or your contractor will be using equipment for directional drilling or boring on your job site, select Yes to this question using the drop-down options. If not, select No. You'll then be asked if there's any explosives or blasting being used. This is a yes-no question. If you plan to use any explosives, like dynamite, during your job, please select yes from the drop-down options. If you answer yes to this question, a pop-up will appear asking you to confirm that you'll be using explosives or blasting. For the dates section, by law, member utilities have at least two full working business days to reply to your location request, meaning, your work start date time is automatically filled to the first legal start date possible based on the date you are filling out your location request. Note, holidays and weekends are not included in the working business day calculation and therefore may impact your first legal start date. To change your work start date, click on the calendar icon and click on the date you plan to start your work. By law, your start date must be within 10 working business days of when you place your location request. The form will not allow you to select a date outside of this range. If you need to change the start time of your planned work within the calendar icon, use the arrows located above and below the designated time to change the time forward or backward. For estimated work complete date, you will identify the date that you think your work will be completed. This date will be automatically populated with your selected work start date. If you want to change your estimated work completion date and or time, you can follow the same steps in the last section. The location request expires if work does not start by designated start date. This is because utility markings can deteriorate, fade over time, and your location request will have an expiration date if work is not started. You cannot alter this date in the form because it is based on your selected work start date time. If you do not begin your work by the expiration date indicated in this field, you will need to submit a new location request. All active web users in the excavator tickets role only have the permission to submit regular legal location requests. A regular notice is when an excavator provides at least two full business working days not including the day of the request, weekends or holidays, but less than 10 business working days. In the next section, you will be identifying your work area on a map using one of three different options, street address, intersection, and between intersections. The state will always be grayed out and will default to NY for New York. Dig Safely New York services all of New York State except for Long Island and New York City which is serviced by the NY811 call center. If you are planning work in the five boroughs of New York City and Long Island, contact NY811 at 800-272-4480. The next field is the county field. Start typing in the county of the address in which your work is taking place. Once you begin typing, possible matches will populate under the field for you to choose from. If you do not know the county of the job site, skip to the street address field. In the street address field, enter the address of the dig site. As you start typing in the address, a list of potential matches will appear in the dropdown, with the closest matches being at the top. The place and county is also displayed with the address and will populate those fields when selected. Once you begin typing in your address, you will notice the list of possible matches lists the addresses within a range. Choose the option that matches the range which your address exists and the place and county. The place is the name of the city or town, municipality, in which your job site is located or associated. The place field is automatically populated based on the street address you selected in the previous step. Note, the place may be the municipality in which the taxes are paid to and will not necessarily be the mailing address. If your street address and place was found, then a list of the nearest intersecting streets will be displayed once you click in the field. 
Select the correct match from the drop-down list. You can enter up to two nearest intersecting streets. Selecting your near street will also change your map. Your near street will be highlighted in red. You may have to use the zoom out feature on the map to verify the location of your near street. Use the minus icon on the left side of the map to zoom out. You can use the plus icon above it to zoom back into the property you have selected as your job site. The area highlighted in blue is your dig site. If you are working at an intersection, select Intersection from the Dig Site Type drop-down menu options. The next field is the County field. Start typing in the county of the address in which your work is taking place. Once you begin typing, possible matches will populate under the field for you to choose from. If you do not know the county of the job site, skip to the Street Address field. In the Street Address field, enter the name of just one of your intersections. As you start typing in the address, a list of potential matches will appear in the drop-down, with the closest matches being at the top. The place and county is also displayed. Select the correct match. A list of streets that intersect with the road you selected in the street address field will appear in the cross street field drop-down menu. Select the cross street that matches the intersection where the digging will take place. If the intersection you are digging at is not found, a message will appear that states Intersection not found. As you enter the dig site information, the mapping process will automatically start. After you have completed filling in the required information, the dig site will be displayed in blue. You can define your work area by using two intersections. If you are working on properties or a roadway for a construction dig, select between intersections from the dig site type drop down menu. You will notice the form will change so that you can identify two intersections. To find the specific area on the street, you will be performing work. The next field is the County field. Start typing in the county of the address in which your work is taking place. Once you begin typing, possible matches will populate under the field for you to choose from. If you do not know the county of the job site, skip to the Street Address field. In the Street Address field, enter the name of the street in which you plan to work. As you start typing in the address, a list of potential matches will appear in the drop-down, with the closest matches being at the top. The place and county is also displayed. Select the correct match. A list of streets that intersect with the road you selected in the street address field will appear in the cross street field drop-down menu. Select the cross street that matches the first of your intersections. Once you've identified the first intersection, you will notice your county, street address, and place have been automatically populated into the second set of dig site information needed to identify the second intersection. Simply find the other cross street to identify the second intersection. Important note, since there's a possibility that the second intersection may be located in a different place than the first intersection, you'll be required to include place information for that second intersection. As you enter the dig site information, the mapping process will automatically start. After you have completed filling in the required information, the dig site will be displayed in blue. Next, you'll be asked for additional work information that may impact the locate process for your job site. First, you'll be asked are you working on both sides of the street. This directly impacts the mapping and utilities notified. Select the drop-down to click Yes, No, or Unknown. You will notice the highlighted blue dig site area on the map to the right of the location request creation form will increase in size to account for the work on both sides of the street. Then, your answer to are you working within 25 feet of the street will notify impacted utilities if your work is being performed within 25 feet of the street. Select the drop down to click yes, no, or unknown to answer this question. Dig Safely New York and its member utilities recommend marking your job site in white paint and or flags to assist the utility locators in finding the job site on a property. Use the drop-down box to select either yes, no, or unknown to indicate if the dig site is marked in white. If the area is marked in a color other than white, please answer this question with the no response. And note in the comments field at the bottom of the location request creation form that the area is marked in a specific color. For example, work area is marked in black. The locate instructions field is where you can designate where on the property you are performing the work. 
You can either use the drop-down box to select where on the site you'll be excavating, or you may type in your own description. In the Depth of Excavation field, type in the approximate depth of the excavation by entering the number in the blank box, and then use the drop-down to select either feet, inches, yards, miles, or meters. If unknown, leave blank. In the Worksite Dimension fields, type in the approximate length and width of the excavation by entering the number in the blank boxes, and then use the drop-down to select either feet, inches, yards, miles, or meters. If unknown, leave blank. Next is the Comments field, which is used to place any additional information or instructions to be sent on to the member utilities. For example, a map is available to locators upon request. Once you've verified that all the information is correct, as well as the dig site mapping, you can click the Save Continue button at the bottom of the form screen. You can also save the location request by clicking on the Complete button at the top right-hand corner of the screen. If at any time before you save your ticket, you want to cancel the request, then click on the Abort Discard button at the top right-hand corner of the screen, or by using the Discard button at the bottom of the form. Once you click on the Complete or Save Continue button, you will be taken to the Verify Location page. Please review the information on this page and click on the Above Information is Correct button at the bottom. If you need to make corrections, you can click on the Back to Ticket button. Once you have verified the information is correct, you will go to the Affected Service Areas page. This page will list the member utilities that will be notified to mark or clear their lines in the area where you plan on excavating. The Comments field will show any information you input into that field when entering the Locate information on the Location Request form. You can also add additional comments in this field. If you want to review the ticket information again before sending your request, you can click on the Back to Ticket button. This will take you back to the main screen where you can revise your location request if necessary. When you are ready to submit your Locate request, then click on the Send Ticket button. After clicking on the Send Ticket button, the following screen will appear that confirms your ticket has been saved with your ticket number. If you provided an email address on your location request, you will automatically have a copy of the ticket emailed to that address. If you have more locates to enter, then you can click on the Create Another Locate Request button. If you are done, then click on the Close button and you will be taken back to a screen displaying the last location request you entered. In the Excavator Ticket role, all submitted location requests will be submitted in a complete status. Once you've exited the previous screen, you'll be redirected to your Ticket Dashboard. Let's learn how to fully utilize the Ticket Dashboard. As a web user in the Excavator Tickets role, your Ticket Dashboard allows you to view tickets you have submitted and tickets assigned to you. This means that if someone selects you as a field contact, you will be able to view this ticket and its respective utility responses. You also have a secondary ticket menu on the left-hand side of this ticket dashboard screen in which you can use to filter your tickets. Here, you can click to view all tickets from the past 60 days, tickets close to expiring, tickets on a map using your current location, and response status of tickets. When you click on the three dots next to the ticket, it gives you the option to quickly view certain aspects as well as take a few quick actions on that ticket. For those tickets in your dashboard, you can use the three dot menu to view the ticket, find all related tickets, view the utility responses, mark your work as completed, locate again, print the ticket text. Clicking the view ticket option in the three dot menu will take you to the full ticket that was submitted. Clicking View Responses in the three-dot menu will pop up a new window over the dashboard to display that ticket's responses. Note, the term service area is the same as utilities notified. In this window, you can see which utilities were notified, what their response is, and any comments left during their responses. If a utility has yet to respond, their row will be highlighted in yellow by default. You are viewing the current most recent response for each service area. You can choose to show all responses and ticket events at the top of the window. This will generate an audit list on the ticket and responses. You will see when the ticket was created, any new versions created, when responses were viewed, when utilities entered responses, and more. 
clicking on the Locate Again option in the three-dot menu allows you to quickly request a new markout for a location request you had previously submitted. This function will pop up a new window over your dashboard and ask you to select a new start date, defaulting to the first legal date. You can also add comments to this location request within this window. To continue, click the Save button. If you decide not to proceed, click the Cancel button. Clicking the Save button will pull up the location request and corresponding map, asking you to verify the location request. You will also have the option to go back to the ticket to make any necessary changes edits. Clicking the Above Information is Correct button will bring up the affected service areas information, giving you a list of notified member utilities. Your last step is to either click the Send Ticket button or the Back to Ticket button. Sending the ticket will give you a new ticket number, and you can view this Locate Again ticket within your dashboard. Clicking the Work Completed option in the three-dot menu allows you to remove a ticket from your dashboard. By clicking this, you are stating that you have completed the work on this location request. To add tickets that you have marked as work completed back to your dashboard view, click on the Show Completed Tickets checkbox above your ticket list. If you accidentally mark a ticket as work completed, find the ticket by clicking the Show Completed Tickets checkbox to bring all your tickets back to your dashboard view. Then click on the three-dot menu for that ticket and click Work Not Completed. Now your ticket will remain in your dashboard. Clicking on the Print Text option in the three-dot menu will generate a print window of that ticket text. Ticket text is a consolidated version of the location request form you completed. It does not include the map. When this window is generated, you can choose to change the destination of the print device. This allows you to select Save as PDF instead of sending the document to a printer. If you need additional help, please visit my.digsafelynewyork.com and select ExecTix Support. You can also contact your field representative.